genetic simulation of Colonel Andrews developed by the aliens. The real Andrews was destroyed, and the same fate awaits Professor Embry if he is captured. That must not happen. How much I can do about it? This generator's shot. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Robotech Crisis Point, which is by Solar Flare Games for two players and takes about 45 minutes to play. In the game Robotech Crisis Point, it's a grid placement game. It's a 4x4 grid with slots on the outsides in column and row, in which you'll be playing cards down, adding tokens to those cards, placing down combat cards in a column and row, and after the entire board is filled in, you're going to flip those cards over, tally up the points in column and row for each specific card, and whoever has the most points in those areas is going to obtain the card. Cards are worth victory points, which you're going to tally up at the end of the game, and whoever has the most victory points points is going to win the game Robotech Crisis Point. All right guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the game down below and then I will explain how to play. So here we have Robotech Crisis Point and everything included in the game. And as you can see, there's uh, some playing cards here, which may or may not come with it. I'm not too sure, but I think it is. And additionally, you're going to be getting a board, a ton of cards for each player, and then these battle points and victory point tokens here that you'll be utilizing. There's also some cool little uh, cards in here for a sponsorship and whatnot, I guess. And as you can see, Unfiltered Gamer is in, is, is in here, which is pretty cool. So just to let you know that I am in the game. Uh, somewhat. Anyway, so let's go ahead and show you Robotech Crisis Point. Every single player is going to get command cards and hero cards, objective uh, cards that are separate, as well as combat and unit cards, locations, and a base card. In addition, there's going to be this little card here, which are, I think, for a separate game, the little promo cards. Set those aside. To begin the game, you're going to look at your objective and choose two of them. There's a bunch of different objectives that you can go through. Pick two of these cards here set them aside and remove the rest from the game. I'll go ahead and do that for both players and we'll just set them over there. Then, as you can see, everybody's going to get their combat cards. These cards are a total of eight and they range from anywhere from two points up to nine and they will be placed on the outside of the board based on what player you are playing as. If you're playing one player, it'll be this side and this side. If you're playing the other player, it'll be this side and this side. So we're going to go ahead and have this guy be over here. Uh, you're also going to take four locations after you shuffle the deck here. There's some units there. And you're going to go ahead and de uh, keep all the units, sorry. And you're going to go ahead and shuffle these and deal out four to each player. So every player is going to get the four locations as well as units and their base. And attach these all. These will all be in your hand, which you'll be utilizing to play on the board here in this four by four grid just outside these spaces here. Uh, you're also going to take these and set these aside as well. Okay. Now, you're also going to have command and hero cards, but this is not until the next phase of the game. So go ahead and take these and also set them aside to be used later after the token portion of the game. You'll additionally get your uh, four unique tokens that can come from hero and command cards, I believe. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and set it up just like this, you're ready to go and begin the game. The first thing that you can do is you can take any card in your hand and you're going to be able to play it face up uh, on the table here. So for instance, if I wanted to, I can take my location, place it on the table right here, anywhere in this four by four grid. Then after you have done that, you're going to do whatever it says. There's a victory point amount on the card, which is if you score this card, you're gonna get a victory, victory points based on the number. And this also says place two of your own battle tokens on this card. So you'll take two battle tokens and place it on the card. Then you're going to look at your combat cards here. And as you can see, there are a number of tokens, or sorry, of, of power on the card, which at the end of the game, if you tally them up for each location, they're going to potentially earn you these spots here. So for instance, at the end of the game, if I had this here and this here, I would have seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11 points for this specific spot. As you can see, this goes down and this goes across. You're also gonna add these up as well and any other bonuses. So we're gonna go ahead and look at our hand here and we're going to go ahead and choose. Now for four victory points, that's not too bad. So maybe I'll put a five here hidden so that the other player does not know that I'm doing that. After that, I can go ahead and choose to play a, a token of, from my pool onto one of my cards. 
if I can. Um, usually when you play units, so there's additional cards in here other than your base and location, these are units, and they will have abilities on them. And in addition, they're going to give, give you or grant you tokens to add to a pool. If they just say that they are added to the card or to add cards, you're going to go ahead and just put them uh, from, the, from the pool into, into the, the stack here, not from your own pool. But in general, uh, you'll have your own specific pool where they say that you're going to be able to get them. Uh, then the next player is going to get to go as well. They will play a base card or maybe let's, say, let's go ahead and show you something else. Uh, let's say, oh, actually, no, the base. So you haven't seen the base. You've seen the locations. When you play a base card, you're going to get points based on the number of cards in your hand to add to your pool. So the more cards you have in your hand, the better, which will score you additional uh, combat points on specific cards during the token placement phase in the game. Units, of course, if you play them, they're worth victory points as well. And they're also going to give you combat uh, pool points to add to the game during the token phase. I'll just go ahead and add those four there. They also have an ability. This is gain the drop token, which is one of these guys here. I can't remember which one it is. I think it might be this one here. And it says before the token phase, discard two of your battle tokens to replace one of your units with a battle roid from your hand. So you can kind of switch things up during the token phase, which is when you're playing tokens back and forth. And of course, in addition to that, you're going to be able to, let's see here, play a combat card. And uh, you're gonna play it face down. This is a four, so maybe we'll go ahead and put that, actually maybe a little higher because that's a five. That's actually worth quite a bit. We'll play that there as well. And uh, then that is going to uh, allow us to play one token on and uh, the turn will pass. And you're gonna keep doing that back and forth until eventually all your combat cards have been played. So I'm just gonna go ahead and speed up this game and show you what a board is going to most likely look like. So that is a total of eight there. And then they got, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the same would go for this guy as well, placing these down. So now he's got all of his combat points filled up as well as where's his uh, other deck of cards here, his base and his units and whatnot, place them like this. Seven, eight, and now the board is filled up. So after this happens, which is there also is likely going to be tokens on these as well, uh, there's going to be a token phase. And the token phase is pretty simple. With the tokens you have in your pool, both players are going to place two down at a time on any card they want. So as opposed to just placing one during your turn on your spaces, you can start placing two down on any locations you want, and you can go back and forth uh, doing this. After you've run out of all of these little tokens here, then you move on to the next phase, which is playing cards back and forth from your hero and command cards. You can play either hero or command, but you can only play two of each, and after all four cards have been played, that will be done for you and your other, the other player. These cards are gonna range from adding tokens onto little things or moving the board around, that kind of stuff. Finally, after that is done, everybody is going to flip over all of their cards here. You have your all your combat cards up, and then you're going to start tallying the points on the board to see who gets what location. Hopefully you've also used these tokens as well when they tell you to use them and how they tell you to use them. All right, so there we go. This is what the end of the game is most likely gonna look like. Something like this with probably more tokens and whatnot, as, as you could probably imagine based on the amount of tokens in the game. But you're gonna add up. So this player here has got six and five, which is 11 for this space here. And this player has three and two. So that means that this player wins, in which case you're gonna put a victory token on here. And that player is gonna get two points at the end of the game. We'll go to the next one here. This is an eight and a six. This is a seven and a two. Once again, this player scores another one. And you're gonna keep doing that until all the spaces on the board are filled with these, at which point you're going to then tally up victory points, and whoever has the most, based on these little tokens here from the board, is the winner. This is going to be four points right here, so it could the game will probably end up somewhere like 23 to 16 or something like that. And the person who has the most points at the end is going to be the winner of Robotech Crisis Point. Hope that makes sense, and if it doesn't, there is another video you can go ahead and watch called uh, Archmage Origins, which is another very basic explanation of what this game is like this one's just got a lot more complexities it includes a lot other of a lot of other additional locations you got your base and of course your units that do a bunch of different things but i think you probably have a good idea of how robotech crisis point works all right let's go ahead and come up and talk about how i feel about robotech crisis point this game has a ton of similarities to the last robotech game that they created and it has a lot of additional stuff so 
if you've already played that one and you want to go ahead and jump into something even more tactical and has even more different aspects to the game, this is your best bet. And for me personally, this is my choice between the two or three games that have similar types of mechanics where it's placing down cards, flipping over your combat cards on the outskirts, and the most points scores you the win. Additionally, the theme is excellent. The artwork is Robotech style and it looks really, really good. I am very uh, much a fan of all the Robotech games that have been coming out. I haven't played one I haven't liked in some way. There's been uh, games coming out from Solar Flare as well as Japan Anime Games and I really, really enjoy these games. This one here, uh, like I said, it has a lot of similarities, but there's a ton of new stuff added to this game. It includes a bunch of extra little things, including some cool promos and whatnot. And additionally, you have choices to make that you hadn't had choices to make pre in the previous game, such as now you've got home locations, a larger board with, of course, the uh, uh, a larger area, so to speak, along with the board attachment, which is really, really nice. I've been wanting a board attachment for this for these games for a while now, and now that it is here, I'm very excited about that. There's a ton of additional tokens you're going to be adding in this game as you're playing around, and based on what portion of the game you're in is how you're adding them, which makes a difference in each and every way. Playing units is sometimes beneficial, depending on how you have placed previously, and it's also based on your objectives. The one little thing I, didn't forget, I forgot to mention, a bit basically, is the objectives, if you completed them at the end, you're going to score additional bonus points like deploy and protect three of your battle lords, which means if you, want, if you deploy three battle lords, which are units, at the end of the game you control them, you're going to score an additional four points. Protect at least four of your own units, which is actually nice with a nice complement to this one here. It gives you five points as long as you control four units and battle lords are units as well. Uh, Battle Lords, okay. I've gotten in trouble previously from mispronouncing uh, the solar, not the solar flare, the... Uh, the wordage or verbiage for Robotech. I know a lot of you Robotech fans out there are uh, really big fans, so I'm doing my best to avoid saying certain things uh, as far as the different sides, because I'm not going to be able to pronounce those. I can't do it for some reason, and I apologize. But overall, this is an excellent game. You guys are really, really going to dig this. However, if you've got ooh, if you've got all of the games previously, and you want something that's going to be new mechanically, this one basically feels very similar to those games with more attached. However, if those games were not enough for you as far as the combat tactical nature of those games, this adds a bunch more content to it and looks a heck of a lot better. And I think you should definitely pick this one up uh, instead of, or uh, in addition to if you already have the other one previously. Between the two, I would go with this one every time. I like games that are basically thicker in nature and have a lot more tactical decisions. If you like games that are tactical with secret bluffing mechanics, there's certain aspects in the game where you can look at other people's combat cards. That plays a big role. As well as, of course, the additional little bonus tokens you can get when you're playing certain cards taking those cards or those tokens in your hand and using them at certain points, allowing you to switch the board up and change how the game flows is a nice little ad additional touch to this game. Excellent little game. Definitely want to check out if you're a Robotech fan or somebody who likes the tactical placement two-player style games. For those of you looking for a larger player game, maybe not for you, but anyway, go ahead and take a look down below in the description for Robotech Crisis Point and where you can go ahead and pick it up by Solar Flare Games. Yes! Seal of approval! <laughs>